I really uh, have to congratulate your efforts. Well, the title today is uh, a little bit different, and uh, I'm going to walk for just a minute. And it's thrown a few folks off as to, well, what do you mean if it's not Chiari, what else could it be? And that's what we're going to try to talk about, and I'll try to explain myself here. Uh, we know what a Chiari malformation in general looks like. We also should know that one Chiari malformation is, one person's Chiari is not the same as another person's Chiari. They're really very variable. And so trying to compare your outcome with someone else's, it's, it's tough to do because basically, again, it varies. This is a, an actual fairly uh, severe Chiari malformation. That brain stem, what you're looking at is the side view of the lower back of the brain cavity and the upper cervical spine. This is bone at the back of the head, it ends there. This is bone at the base of the skull, it ends there. From there to there is the hole at the bottom of the skull. Above that, we have the cerebellum, part of the brain stem. This part of the cerebellum doesn't belong here. The tip of that tissue should be about three millimeters up inside on average. Instead, it's being shoved, if you will, down into this opening, and this lower part of the brainstem is being stretched. And there's, in this case, a fluid collection building up inside the spinal cord, as you all know, is a syrinx or syringomyelia. And so there's so many systems involved. This is like a central computer control area, the brainstem, especially the medulla, that people have a variety of neurological symptoms. And not one person's presentations can be very different from another. One may have the typical explosive or pressure headache in the back. One may just have repetitive vomiting for unknown cause or loss of hearing. So it's a very variable presentation. Now, we have a Chiari that's maybe not as severe, not as impacted, nevertheless still a Chiari malformation. We know this person may have had the Chiari malformation or has had the Chiari malformation all their lives. Why in their mid-30s are they now having symptoms? And then if the symptoms show up, are we sure that the symptoms are due to the Chiari malformation? Okay, so, um, so as we uh, evaluate uh, people with Chiari malformation, we also have to think a little bit widely and say, yes, we see the Chiari malformation, but let's make sure we consider other things that could be going along with the Chiari malformation. And you heard Dorothy use the term comorbidities. That means another disorder that goes along with Chiari. Or to put it another way, having a Chiari malformation doesn't protect us from any other disorder. Okay, so we have to keep things open. And, and what I'm trying to share today is, let's think, why do some people not respond? Is it something else that's hidden that we're missing in addition to the Chiari? You've probably seen maybe discussions on the net where a Chiari, the surgery itself looks very good. Things are wide open, but the person is having symptoms. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. Now, fortunately, um, Diane Mueller's here today, and I have to credit um, um, Diane Mueller and...